On Becoming a Leader by Warren Bennis 1989 In a nutshell, true leadership arises in the full expression of a person's unique potential. Bennis is a major figure in the academic study of leadership, but has also popularized the subject through bestsellers. In 1985, he co-authored Leaders, based on observation and interviews with 90 of America's leaders, ranging from astronaut Neil Armstrong to McDonald's founder Ray Kroc. The book's conclusion was that leadership is more crucial than we know, yet can be learned by anyone. While Leaders is a business classic that analyzes the nature of leadership, on becoming a leader is more personal. Asking how you can make leadership a habit of existence while around you the world becomes a blur of change. The second book is the product of more in-depth dialogue with a smaller number of people, 28 in all, including film director Sidney Pollack, feminist author Betty Friedan, and musician and a and Records founder Herb Alpert. What is a leader? On Becoming a Leader provides many fine insights. Perhaps the key one, and the theme of the book, is this. True leaders are not interested in proving themselves. They want, above all, to be able to express themselves fully. Proving oneself implies a limited or static view of the self, whereas leaders, by continually seeking their fullest expression, must be willing to engage in periodic reinvention. For Benesis leaders, life is not a competition, but a flowering. Structured education and society often get in the way of leadership. What we need to know gets lost in what we are told we should know. Real learning is the process of remembering what's important to you, and becoming a leader is therefore the act of becoming more and more your true self. Leadership is an engagement with life itself because it demands that your unique vision be accomplished, and that usually involves a whole life. When people protest that they can't lead or don't want to lead, they're usually thinking of management and giving speeches. But leadership is as varied as people, and the main question is not whether you will be burdened, but how you're challenged to escape mediocrity and conformity and really lead yourself. According to Bennis, becoming a leader involves continuous learning and never-dying curiosity, a compelling vision, leaders first define their reality, what they believe is possible, then set about managing their dream, developing the ability to communicate that vision and inspire others to follow it, tolerating uncertainty and taking on risk, a degree of daring, personal integrity, self-knowledge, candor, maturity, welcoming criticism, being a one-off, an original. Leaders learn from others, but are not made by others. Reinvention. To create new things sometimes involves recreating yourself. You may be influenced by your genes and environment, but leaders take all their influences and create something unique. Taking time off to think and reflect, which brings answers and produces resolutions. Passion for the promises of life. A belief in the best for yourself and others. Seeing success in small, everyday increments and joys. Not waiting years for the big success to arrive. Using the context of your life rather than surrendering to it. What does the last point mean? Menace believes that late 20th century business life was mostly about managing rather than leading, with people and organizations focusing on small matters and short-term results. His message is, stop being a product of your context, of your particular place and time. 
You can see your context as the backdrop for your particular genius to develop, or you can let it enslave your mind. In many ways, the path of a driven person is an easy one, since it doesn't require much thought. The leader's path is consciously taken, may be more challenging, but involves infinitely greater potential and satisfaction, not to mention better health. To lead, you have to make a declaration of independence against the estimation of others, the culture, the age. You have to decide to live in the world, but outside existing conceptions of it. Leaders do not merely do well by the terms of their culture. They create new contexts, new things, new ways of doing and being. Some examples. Personal integrity, a compelling vision, and the ability to enjoy risk and uncertainty define leadership. Bennis uses the example of television writer-producer Norman Lear, who revolutionized U.S. television by making shows such as All in the Family and Cagney and Lacey. For the first time, TV shows reflected real American people rather than cowboys, private eyes, and caricatured families. Lear saw a world that was waiting to be expressed and expressed it. Not only did his shows break the mold, they were successful year after year. In his assessment of American presidents, Bennis sees Johnson, Nixon, and Carter as driven men who projected their personal histories onto the country they ruled. Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower and Kennedy, on the other hand, had the gift of personal reinvention and lived in the present to reshape the United States' future. Lincoln was perhaps the greatest president because he focused on what at the time seemed only remote possibilities, ending slavery and preserving the Union. His fits of deep personal depression were nothing put next to those mighty causes. A world of leaders. Bennis's conviction is that we are in dire need of leaders. He wrote on becoming a leader when American economic leadership was being seriously challenged. We forget now, but in the late 1980s, it did seem for a while that Japan was surpassing the U.S. in production, wealth, and innovation. Maybe the United States listened to Bennis and other leadership theorists. For the American economic resurgence was characterized by obsession with innovation and quality, and the realization that firms get ahead by helping their employees reach their full potential. It took someone of the stature of Bennis to highlight the link between self-knowledge and business success, but this is now becoming accepted. The new type of leader is not satisfied with doing a job or running a company, but is compelled to find an outlet for their personal vision of the world. Now, the only way many companies can attract and keep the best people is by offering them more than merely money or prestige. They offer them the chance to make history. Consider, for instance, the motto of Internet retailer, Amazon.com. Work hard, play hard, change the world. Final comments. Bennis has probably done as much as anyone to shatter the myth of leaders as heroes born, not made. Above all, leadership is a choice and involves leading ourselves first. We live in a democracy of leadership in which everyone can lead in some way. As more people understand what leadership means and are taught to achieve their potential, it might be expected that competition will increase to ridiculous levels. However, competition is the result of everyone striving to win at the same thing, whereas personal visions are unique. To become a leader is to claim the power and assurance that come from being a one-off. This commentary is based on the original edition of On Becoming a Leader. There's a new, updated, and expanded edition that you may prefer to acquire.
Warren Bennis. At 19, Bennis was the youngest infantry commander among the Allies to fight in Europe in the Second World War. Back in the United States at Antioch College, he found a mentor in Douglas McGregor, the groundbreaking management theorist, and was also influenced by Abraham Maslow. After studying group dynamics, he wrote about new organizational forms and coined the term adhocracies as the opposite of bureaucracies. He gained his Ph.D. at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Bennis was president of the University of Cincinnati and executive vice president at the State University of New York and has been on the faculty of MIT's Sloan School of Management, Harvard and Boston Universities, and Sayad, and the Indian Institute of Management in Calcutta. His other books include Organizing Genius, 1997, Co-Leaders, The Power of Great Partnerships, 1999, and the autobiographical An Invented Life, 1993, and most recently, Geeks and Geezers, How Era, Values, and Defining Moments Shape Leaders, 2002, with Robert J. Thomas. On Becoming a Leader has been published in 13 languages. Bennis is founder and distinguished professor of the Leadership Institute, Marshall School of Business, at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles.